Hey, hey guys, this is the lesson video for lesson 3-1. We're going to be looking at understanding and representing exponents. Our essential question for today is how can you write and evaluate numbers with exponents? So let's go ahead and jump in and find out, well, what is an exponent? Okay, so you can use an exponent to write repeated multiplication of a number. So right here, we would look at this, this whole chunk right here is called a power. The blue two down here, this number, the big number is called the base. The base is the number that's going to be repeatedly multiplied. So you can see here that it's repeated. Okay, then the exponent guy up here tells us how many times we're gonna multiply that number. So you can see here that's three, so I would repeat two three times. A number that can be written using exponents is called a power. So now that you guys know what we'll be talking about, what language we'll be using, let's go ahead and jump into a problem. So example one, this is also in your book if you'd like to follow along with it. It says understand and represent exponents. The expression two times two times two represents the number of cells after one hour if there is one cell at the start. How can you write this expression using exponents? How many cells will there be after two hours? So they're asking two questions here. First is how can I write this expression using exponents? So they've already given me an expression here. So it says after one hour. I know hours go by 20 minutes, so that's gonna be 20 minutes, 40 minutes, 60 minutes. So how can I write that using an exponent? Well, we know that the base is the number that's being repeated. So what number do I see repeated? I see a two. How many times is it being repeated? Well, one, two, three. So my exponent is three. And we use our exponent as a smaller number up in the air. It's kind of up in the corner. Okay, and then the second question that it asks us is how many cells will there be after one hour? So now we can actually go ahead and solve it. So two to the third power is the same as two times two times two. Okay, so what you're gonna do, it's not two times three. A lot of people make the mistake of saying, well, it's two times three and that's six, but that's not right. What we wanna do is make sure that we always expand it out so that we can use each factor separately. There are some times when there's large, like large lists that you've expanded out, and I can show you some, um, some ways to group it and think about it. But for this one that's kind of short, we would just go two times two. Two times two is four. And then you grab the next one times two, and four times two is eight. So two to the third power is eight. So there'll be eight cells in one hour. All right, looking at example two, we're going to evaluate exponents. Evaluate is just another word for solve. Um, Trying to finish the problem. So this one says, how can you evaluate two to the zero power? Well, here we can see the base is two and the exponent is zero, the little number there up in the sky. So here it's made a little table for us to look for a pattern. So we start off with two to the zero and then two to the first. I know two one time is two. Two two times is four. And just like in the last problem, we saw two multiplied out three times is the same as eight, and it's gonna keep going. So when we're looking at this table, it says each value equals the previous value multiplied by two. So that's true, right? Eight multiplied by two is 16. Four multiplied by two is eight. Two multiplied by two is four. So that must mean what would this have to be multiplied by to make two? N would have to be one. So because of that, we know that any number to the zero power equals one. Okay, so if I had uh, 17 to the zero power, that's still going to equal one. Or if I had three to the zero power, that's going to equal one. If I had three to the first power, that's really just me multiplying where I'm putting three out one time, right? And if I had three to the second, whoop, it would be three times three, okay? So if you look 
actually, let's try to look at it this way. If I have three to the first power, it's one, three, three to the second power, it's multiplied twice. But if we kind of go backwards, here's two, one, and there's not really anything here, right? There's no threes out, zero threes are out. So it's going to be one. You guys will have to excuse me. My neighbor has been doing um, some yard work and stuff. So if you can hear that leaf blower, my apologies. Okay. I want you guys to pause and try this one. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and solve it after you have paused. So we are going to start off by writing, let me get a different marker color here. We're gonna start off by writing what the problem says. Okay, one third to the third power. In this problem, our base is one third. Our exponent is three. So this is the one that's going to be repeated this one tells us how many times we'll repeat it in multiplication. So I'm going to go ahead and do one third times one third times one third. Okay. So what we can do here is we can start off by saying one third times one third is one ninth. Then we can pull down that last one there and say one ninth times one third is one twenty seventh. Okay, so that's one way to do a fraction. The other way to do the fraction is to look at it with two different as two different pieces. We can have um, our numerator. Ooh, I'm having a hard time with my brain here. One three times, right? One repeated three times. And then we can also do our denominator three times, okay? So that would be one and three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. And isn't that the same thing that we got before is one twenty seventh? So either way is fine, just as long as you are expanding it out. That's, that's what we wanna practice. We wanna make sure that we're not doing one times three is three and three times three is nine because that's not the case. And then finally, we're gonna look at um, ones that have a base of 10. So this one's pretty cool because you will use this when you start doing things like chemistry and scientific notation and that kind of stuff. So this is a really cool one that you will use again. There's always questions like, when am I going to use this? You will be using this one again in school. Okay. So it says that Julia calculated the foil as 1.9 times 10 to the fifth power units thick. Tom calculated the foil as 183,000 units thick. Which calculation represents the greater thickness for the foil? So what we need to do is we need to evaluate the expression 1.9 times 10 to the fifth power. Okay, so this one has put out a nice little chart for us. We're not looking at the decimal yet, but we are looking at how 10 can be expanded um, as a base. So 10 to the first power, so 10 one time is 10. 10 to the second power, 10 times 10 is 100. And then you can keep seeing that it's going fourth. So they've expanded down here, 10 to the fifth is 10 repeated five times, and that comes out to be 100,000. Okay, so now that we've done the 10 part, we can work with our decimal. Okay, so I know that 1.9 or 1 and 9 tenths is what I'm looking at here. So because we see that there are, what I'm going to say here is this five, because we're working in the power of 10 and our decimals are in the power of 10, we can um, multiply knowing that it's going to be times 1000. So we can move the decimal five places. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Anywhere where I see a little bubble, I know that I can fill in with a zero. Okay, and my decimal is going to be moved out here because I've multiplied 1.9 times 100,000. So now my answer, and I can see that I have a zero here. Okay, so whenever I put my zeros out, I like to say ones, tens, hundreds, comma, and then you can go ahead and move that into the next unit. So we have 190,000. So which calculation reps represents the greater thickness. Well, this Tom guy said that it was 183,000. This one is 190,000. So this one represents the greater thickness because this is a larger value. 
Okay, so that's really all it is. It's it's really pretty simple, guys. Exponents, the, the best thing to do is always write it out. Um, some of us may think, oh, I can do that in my head. Um, that's not always the case. So I'm going to put a new screen here so you guys can see um, if I had, let's say, 2 to the 8th. Okay. I, you can't really, I can't do that in my head anyway. So what I would do is I would mold, I would expand that out. So here I have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So here's what we can do. We already knew that two to the third power was eight, right? And this is eight, right? So this is eight times eight and then times two times two is four. So I can make it a little bit more simple on myself. Eight times eight is 64. And then I can just multiply that value times four. Okay. Cause otherwise what we're going to be doing is two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32. And we're just going to have to keep going on and on and on. So if you notice um, my parentheses around here, stop just before this multiplication symbol. And the same thing's true as here, because we're not, we don't want to put all of it into the parentheses because we want to multiply these values that we get. So you can group it however you'd like, that it makes it easier for you to, to solve because some of these will be kind of lengthy and we don't want to have to go down the line. We kind of lose our accuracy when we do it that way. So grouping it, is a great strategy when you have a larger exponent. Okie dokie artichokies. Hope you had a good time watching this and have fun solving exponents. Woo woo.